along the way have you had some strong influences or mentors if you like that have helped help you along your journey yeah definitely i think um early days phd wise definitely tim my phd supervisor was uh, amazing in that space um since then i think my probably my career has, has pivoted a little bit um, more into kind of a data science path um so i've gone back post phd to do kind of post-grad work um, in data science space um, just to upskill kind of in that area um, mm -hmm. so probably seeing some people in, in that space has been um, really cool so guys kind of outside of sport who no one here would know um, I think is really cool because I guess in sport we we think that we're data rich and we think that we're advanced with data but when you look in, in some other industries we're actually quite poor and we're, we're actually a long way behind and what some other industries are kind of doing. What other, like, I guess, courses outside of um, your degrees are helpful? You mentioned learning and leaning off other practitioners or other scientists um, yep. outside of the sport of industry, but are there any courses that you'd recommend, either online courses or uh, books or documentaries? You know, uh, yeah. Platforms? Yeah, it's funny in the data space, there's, there's a lot. So I did a postgrad degree um, through JCU um, purely because I kind of wanted to just formalise that whole that whole process and, and kind mm -hmm. of do it all but outside of that i definitely think um youtube is an amazing resource i think there's there's lots and lots of good stuff out there um to to literally to watch and people will go through big data um, and code projects and we'll kind of talk through what they're doing um i think that that's really good for me i, I like to learn by kind of seeing um, something done and, and seeing someone work through it and then I kind of go and apply it so I think YouTube was really good for that um, mm -hmm. and then I guess to supplement that there's another website called Kaggle which I'm not I'm not sure if you're familiar with but it's like it's mainly a US based data site um, but they do it's obviously they've got lots of um, freely or publicly available data sets on there and for a, a sports scientist listening in uh, early on in their development phase what are, what would you feel are some non-negotiables to be equipped with when you're about to take on an internship at an AFL club or um, or not even an internship but you, that maybe there's a, there's a there's a goal there that you want to be able to make an impact at, at an yeah. AFL club one day what would you think would be some yeah, important uh, skills I think the big the biggest thing would be it's kind of tied together like a pro proactiveness um, and mm -hmm. transparency with your data and information so it's you you if you're a, if you're just starting out no doubt you'll be collecting some sort of data um, on players and someone will want kind of feedback on it somewhere along the line. Um, being, I guess, proactive to collect good data. So whatever that looks like for you, whether whether that means that if you haven't used the system before, whether that means you going out and doing a trial run and making sure that you, you can collect the data well. So when it comes to um, your actual data collection, that runs well because we, we need to collect good data at the source otherwise it doesn't really mean anything anyway mm -hmm. um so that that might be one example of what being proactive looks like on a uh, different note if you were to let's say a new afl team the tasmania team and you've been yep. handed the, the sports science program you got an endless budget yep. but also the football department for whatever reason is endless too so what would be the end, you know, the optimal sports science department in terms of, you know, some you're the head and then some assistants that are helping you. How many uh, and who, at what roles, I guess, would they sort of take on? And and yeah, what equipment would you want to have? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, good question. Um, I think that I would probably want to to monitor training. I probably would be rolling with uh, pretty much just a GPS and heart rate setup. Um, mm -hmm. I would be pretty comfortable to run the pro the field program based off that, um, which would be cool. Um, gym wise, I'd be obviously interested in team builder um, and probably gym aware would be the mm -hmm. two the main ones from a gym point of view. How would you yep. go about um, building a sports scientist, uh, building their visualization and presenting sort of skills for athletes or other pr practitioners, coaches? Yeah, yeah, I think. Background. Yep, yep. I think first thing is work with your stakeholders, which. If you're in a sporting team, might be a physio, might be an SSC. So I think having a discussion with them before you go and build anything. So obviously store your data well, but then have have a conversation with someone to say, oh, like what what do you want to see? Like what what in a perfect world, how how are you managing? Like what like I don't know. Let's say when we're looking at someone's bench press, say, and we're we're tracking them over time because we might want to see some changes. Then it might be a conversation around, okay, like how how would you look at that like do you want to look that 
do you want to look at a session by session basis? Are you happy to take, do you want their total volume for a week? Do you want their max for a week? Um, do you want their number of reps for a week? Um, kind of try and be as precise, I think might be the word. Try, try and be as in detailed as you can be 